Hello, ladies, gents, and others. Welcome back to another one of my precious publications. It's been a while since I've been able to sit down and actually take the time to do one of these videos, but I am really glad to be able to share with you some of the projects of mine that did get to come out last year and early this year. So while this video is mainly talking about my novel, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, which released in December of 2020, pretty much why I had been MIA for so long over here on this channel. I did wanna show a project that just came out through Raven and Drake Publishing just a few days ago. So here it is, April Horrors. It is a collection of 100 word drabbles related to April Fool's Day. There are so many great stories in here by authors from all over the world, and they're really creepy. There are 100 word stories, this book is absolutely worth checking out. It's available, hello Hope. <laughs> it's available in both ebook and paperback copy. It will also be available in hardcover very soon, but as of right now, it's just ebook and paperback. The publisher is working on getting everything ready for the hardcover edition to be coming out very soon. I personally have five pieces in this anthology. They were the first five pieces of mine to be picked up in 2021, so I'm really, really excited that they are in here and that the book is out already. But in addition to my work, my girlfriend also has three of her own pieces in here, which kicked off her publishing career. So I'm very excited for her for having her pieces in here as well. So congratulations. I know you're watching this. It is a fun read. April Fool's Day is coming up. These are short, they're only 100 words long, but sometimes, personally at least for me, those 100 word stories sometimes can get you a little bit harder than the longer ones because they are so short, so sweet, and do leave that lingering feeling of dread with them. So just something I wanted to talk about. I wanted to show it off. Here it is, April Horrors through Raven and Drake Publishing, my first publication of 2021. And now I'm gonna talk about what we're actually here to talk about today. And that is my novel, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Like I said, the book released in December of last year, 2020. I know I talked about it a little bit in my last video, my tea talk, just catching up with you guys about what was going on with the end of my year. Like I said, that pretty much was the reason I was so MIA, that I really wasn't on the channel for the majority of the year last year. It was a lot of work. For those of you who are writers, I'm sure you absolutely understand that writing a novel and getting it ready to go to press is no small feat. It basically takes up all of your time. And I really do appreciate everybody who understands why I haven't been over here on the channel and who has been supportive with understanding that it's very difficult to juggle both my full-time career and my full-time writing career. They are two very different things that it's just, it's a lot of work. And especially with my writing career, I feel like I'm almost doing two of them, at least when I was working on the novel because my writing career for the most part is doing a lot of submissions for work for anthologies like the April Horrors that I just showed you. It's a lot of writing, it's a lot of revising, it's a lot of querying, it's a lot of following up with publishers, doing interviews, marketing, getting a schedule ready for both submitting, for releases coming out, stuff like that, for press. It's crazy. And that's just in the literary magazine aspect of the world. But when you throw a novel into that as well, it's a whole other animal. And honestly, for the last year, for the most part, I'm really gonna say since June, because that's when I moved and when things really started getting crazy um, with my life. I will do another video talking about this later. I'm not gonna ramble about it all on here because this is about my novel. But it ended up being like I was working three jobs. And I thank all of you that understand why I haven't been here actively. Again, this is just a hobby for me. YouTube is just where I check in and just talk about some fun stuff with you guys. But my main focus on other social media platforms for my novel and all of that is basically what took up most of my time. So I wanna show it off because clearly, you know, you guys have been wondering where I am, where I've been, what I've been doing, and that's pretty much my answer. I published a book, like, this is my debut novel and I'm really excited, I'm really excited. And the reception that I got for this book has been phenomenal. And once again, I know I already said this in my last video, but I wanna say it again. It is truly all because of all of you. Those who went out and bought my book, those who left reviews, those who were unable to buy, but they still shared links, they still shared information, they shared interview articles with me. All of the local shops that took on copies of the book when they knew that I couldn't do in-person book launches and author signings because of what's going on in the world with the virus, 
just everybody who took the time to even just congratulate me and show their support. It really, truly means so much. And I can't thank all of you enough. And like I said, because of this book, I went on to achieve some pretty great things the end of last year. And again, this is kind of why I've been away. And like I said, I'm gonna have another video talking about this very soon. This is about my novel, but this is where I've been. <laughs> and because of my book, because of the reception that it received, because of the press that got covered on it, I ended up getting accepted into the Horror Authors Guild and the Horror Writers Association. Two very big feats that I never, ever would have imagined happening. And it's because of this novel, it's because of your support that this ended up happening. And I really am honored, I really am blessed, and I can't thank all of you enough once again. So that being said, I'm gonna show you my book, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of the process and some crazy stuff that ended up happening in regards leading up to the publication. I know I glossed over it, but I really do want to sit down and go a little more in depth about what happened because it was, it was a headache. And again, when you see this, you'll understand why I really hadn't been here on YouTube so much and not having time to make videos because this really took up the bulk of my time, energy and resources, but before then, I'm gonna show you my book. So here it is. It came upon a midnight clear, my holiday horror novel that released in December of last year. So I'm gonna read you the back of the book summary really quickly, just so you have an idea of what it's about. I know I've mentioned it over here on this channel multiple times in my tea talk videos and my other writing videos leading up to my last video, but it is full of holiday lore from around the world. So you've got stuff from all different cultures, all different countries. It's jam-packed with tons and tons of lore, and everyone so far seems to be really into the lore that I've talked to about this book. And it really is exciting for me because I spent a lot of time researching. There was a lot of research that went to this book, many, many hours of looking into different lores from around the world, different things that cultures did, um, ancient tradition, things like that, that went into this. And it really took a lot out of me, but I'm glad that it paid off in the end and people really did appreciate it and enjoy it. So anyway, here is the back of the book summary of what my novel, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, is about. It is the most wonderful time of the year for everyone except Harold Trapp. With sales numbers plummeting, he and his company rush plans to create the perfect Christmas gift, the Hans and Heidi dolls. But with a tight deadline hanging over their heads, Stress is a frequent visitor. As are the two cats that mysteriously appear on his doorstep. But there's something sinister hiding behind their sweet and furry demeanor. And the town of Oak Ridge comes to know it well. When the Christmas lights shine and the snow falls heavy, something awakens. Something dark and ancient. Cold. And with it, unspeakable terrors are born. From legends of old black trains to holiday satyrs and straw goats of yore, the winter wind lurks in the deepest of shadows, hungry for flesh, waiting for the darkness to return. The spirit of the season is far more than Harold Trapp bargained for. So I know right now it's not Christmas time, obviously. Everybody who's reviewed this book said this book can be read at any time of the year. It's good for any time. Obviously winter, it's got winter vibes, probably a better time, but I'm going to promote this again closer to Christmas. I'm gonna do a giveaway for it this year because I really wanted to last year, but like I said, things got really hectic with promotion, um, interviews that I was lined up for, just a lot of crazy stuff at the end of the year and struggling to get this to the market due to some issues with the art department, which I will be talking about momentarily. So all around, everything went very smooth with this project. My editors were very on top of everything. I had the design team very on top of everything. I had a date, release date with my press. Everything was ready to go. I had social media all lined up. Marketing, everything, just ready to go. And the last thing I was waiting on was some artwork from an artist that I had contracted out back in the spring. So this pretty much is where the majority of my time and energy went with this project. 
And I know I talked about this before, but I want to talk about it again because it is something very important to get out there and something that still is like grating on me and like eating away at me because I know I should let it go, but it just, it infuriates me. And I'm, I hope you all understand why. So I contracted this artist out in the spring, basically laid everything out, said this is our deadline. The book is going to print on this day. Um, the design team needs artwork and it needs to be in by this time. It basically, the deadline was late November because the artwork was very easy to just plug it in and get it ready to go. So of course the artist was like, yeah, that's plenty of time. And they really didn't have that much work to do. They assigned on to about four or five drawings and they said, yeah, I'll get some sketches to you in the coming weeks and we'll be ready to go. Very, very, very long story short. It was later in the summer and I still had never heard back anything. I was in touch with her many times. She ignored my emails. I messaged her on social media because I thought, well, hey, maybe there's something wrong with the email. Never answered me. It took one of my friends who happened to know this person to reach out and contact her for her to even get back with me. Every time I had to be in contact with this artist, she only would answer me through someone else. She never directly messaged me. And it ended up being where she promised that these sketches for my approval were going to be in in September. And I was like, okay, like, obviously we have two months to go. Sketches, once they're approved, wouldn't take her that long to do. She assured me they would be in by November. Those sketches never came. And at the end of the day, I was completely ghosted. I messaged her on my professional email, on my personal email. I messaged her Twitter, I messaged her Instagram, I messaged where I could, I messaged her business page, just trying to be like, hey, like just in case nothing is working, like I, I just need to know where these sketches are. Like we have a deadline and the publisher is not going to wait. Like this has to go to press. We agreed, we had a contract, payments and all that was were settled and I was ghosted. So at this point we had about two weeks to hit press and I had to contract out other artists with two weeks to go who rushed on this. And I am so thankful for all of them. Everyone who stepped up to the plate, everyone who helped pull this together and get it to press when it needed to go. I can't thank you enough because you really saved this and got it out to shelves when it needed to. It just drives me insane because this person had been contracted back in the spring and completely ghosted me in the most unprofessional way. And like I said, I have never in my life experienced such unprofessionalism in the publishing or art industry. And for those of you who know, I know I've talked about it before. I come from a family of professional artists from the comic book industry. And we have never seen anything like this. Like it really, it's disgusting. Like I'm going to be honest, it's disgusting. And especially the fact that she dragged everything along until the last minute and we had a tight deadline, we had a contract, and she just never pulled through. And I think the worst part of all of it is it has been seven months now and she still doesn't have the decency to even message me back and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I was busy, I completely missed this. I'm sorry, like an apology, just apologize. But she can't even do that. There's no professionalism at all. So ultimately that I think is just what annoys me the most. But ultimately that is what took up so much of my time with this book because between the editing, between the distribution, between the marketing, between all the social media presences that I had to do, between the interviews I had to do, between meeting with my design team, getting everything ready to go to press, all of that. I had to basically babysit an artist, a professional that never delivered. So I essentially had to do that job twice. And that's really what killed me. It killed my motivation and it just, it exhausted me. It really did. And everybody, everybody who speaks to me and everybody who follows me on my other social media, you know that I vented a lot about this during those months. And I thank you for putting up with it because I, it was very stressful. It was a lot. But at the end of the day, regardless of all of that, the finished product is amazing. 
and the reception was amazing and I can't thank all of you enough. Like I said, the book has five stars across the board with reviews. It's got a lot of a review. It's been covered in the Horror Writers Association blogs and magazines. And there was a video talking about it by one of the editors over at the Horror Writers Association. And it was their featured book a few months ago. And it's still on their featured page. And it's just gotten a lot of hype and a lot of press. And I truly, I'm thankful for all of you because it's because of your support that I got this far. And it's because of you spreading the word and again leaving reviews buying your copies it's really helped me it's really helped my career grow like i said this is why i've been accepted into these communities and just a lot of good things happened and i don't know if i mentioned this i think i did in the other one but um my novel was nominated this year for the eric hoffer book award which is a huge honor and even if it doesn't win the winners are announced in may even if it doesn't win just being nominated is a huge huge honor and i am thrilled and again blessed and thankful for all of you for your support and your love and just your understanding of why I haven't been on here as much as I would have liked. Again YouTube is just a hobby for me but it's a nice place to come and talk about some of my achievements, my successes, and just what's going on in my life because it's fun sharing it with all of you who I do know like to come and see what is going on with me. But before I wrap this up, I just wanted to show you one more time my novel, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It is available on Amazon. The link to purchase it in both ebook and paperback copy will be down below in my description. So check it out. And if you pick up a copy, please leave a review. Every review severely helps more than you know. And once again, I just wanna thank you for all your support and sticking by and being such great followers, friends, and fans. So I love all of you. Um, I'm wrapping this up now. Obviously you can see that they're being crazy and I, <laughs> I make sure they're not gonna get into anything or break anything, but I will be back very soon with another video update. Some more precious publications as some of my new works are coming out this year and I do wanna talk about them and some other videos very soon. Remember to keep staying safe, keep washing your hands, don't be stupid. I love all of you guys and I will see you very soon.